Hello, I'm Jenny Parker, and in this short tutorial, I'll show you how to get started using WizIQ. On the Ask Learning Solutions website, on the Training Programs page, you'll find a link to the WizIQ um, sign up page. So if you click on that link, it will take you to WizIQ and give you all the information about that. Now I'm signed in, so you actually see my profile show straight away here on screen. To be able to record your presentation, you need a premium account. So what you need to do is just contact me and I will give you access to this account that I have and you'll be able to record it. But in the meantime, you might want to just create yourself a free account here at WizIQ to practice or to explore it and play around with it. Once you have your account, you go into My Stuff and go to My Classes and from there you'll be able to schedule a new class. Of course a number of you will be using My Account, you'll only be able to schedule one class at one time. You can't run two sessions at the same time. So if it comes up and says it's not available, it's because someone else has booked that time and that date, in which case you could contact me and check it out. The first thing you need to enter is the title of your training session. And at the end of the title, you can see I've put my and Tara's name. And that's because the number of you will be using my account so that we know whose training session that is. You set the time and date for your presentation. I'm just going to pick um, the 27th of October. And the time, p.m already set to Western Australia time zone so you just leave that and you can put um, some keywords in to identify your presentation and you can type in a description about the class if you like as well to give people an idea of what it is your training is about. Only people who you invite so it stays private or you can have anyone on the web if you want to make it so that your friends or family can view it as well. Okay, if it's private, then you can decide whether to record it or not to record it. And if it's public, the recording will be available for anyone to download. If you make it private, the only people who can attend are those that you send an email to. And they need to use that email to access the training session. And then click Schedule and Continue. Okay, the next screen will allow you to invite your attendees. You can invite uh, by entering email addresses. You simply type in the email address, I'm going to put mine, and add it to the list over here on the right. So you can copy and paste these email addresses from that student details document on Blackboard. Add a message if you wish to tell them a little bit about it. There's a standard default message or you can change that message if you prefer. And when you finish you click on invite contacts. That's all you need to do to schedule your class and then you can click on the launch class here at the top. You can see it starts in 32 days and 3 hours. The only people who can access it prior to the start time is the um, teacher. Once your class opens you need to make sure that you allow your audio video. Your audio video won't start broadcasting until the actual session starts, but once the session starts, you will see that your audio and video camera will come up here. It's a good idea to check your device settings and to test everything in here to make sure that your microphone and your video hello, is all set up and working OK. And then you can hide that little box. When people join the class, you'll see their names turn up in this top part up here and this is the chat box where you can chat and people just simply type in the bottom. You can type a welcome message in the chat that uh, people will see when they enter the class or you can give instructions about something you might want them to do. You can also see the little smiley faces here and you can see that you can change the font size of your message. Right down the bottom of the screen you'll see the class will start in some time and underneath that it shows you the time, so here it's 32 days away. Over on the left are the tools for the whiteboard area, selection tool, pointer tool, so that when you've got something on the screen that you actually want to point to, people will see your mouse with this selection tool, even though you see your mouse, 
um, your students won't. See little freehand tool so you can draw the text tool so you can type in some text. You can draw different shapes and lines and a few other things there. You can erase certain things. You can do some special shapes. You can delete specific shapes by clicking on them on their border. And you can add smiley faces in a range of different emotions. Up the top here where you can see file, you can upload a file from your desktop or you can open one from the content library. And I'll show you how to add it to the content library at the end. So if you upload it from your desktop, you just find it on your computer and upload it in. Now that's fine if you do that plenty of time in advance to your presentation because it will take quite a little while to convert. Whereas if you upload it into your library, it will have already been converted. So when you select the PowerPoint presentation or whatever the file is you wanted to add, you can see there's a PowerPoint or some PDF files here and click Add to Class, it adds it straight away because it's already been converted. And then once you have your PowerPoint presentation in, you'll be able to use the arrow keys here at the top right to move forward or backwards throughout your presentation. And you can jump to specific slides by using this drop down arrow. And there are other features like Poll, um, the uh, media player where you can add in YouTube videos if you want to play um, YouTube. So it, at the moment the only format that with IQ supports is YouTube so it needs to be added there and you would just add in copy and paste your video link and it would appear in the playlist so you'd have to play that within your presentation. But I'll point you to the help files to show you um, more of those. So that's the basics of getting started with, with IQ. So let's just go and have a look and see now how you can add your PowerPoint presentation to your with IQ library. I'm just going to close out of this session. Up here at the top right, just click the close button and leave the page. And it returns me back to my WizIQ file that I had opened before. If I go back up the top here to my stuff and I go to my content. And in here you can see there's um, quite a bit of content that I already have there. And you can make it private or public. The little tick indicates that it is available. So all you need to do is um, click on the upload content. There's a link here and there's also a link over here on the top right. And again you find the file that's on your computer that you want to upload. And you fill in the details, your title, your tags, etc. Whatever it is that you need to identify it. Make it public or private and if it's private then people can't download it or access it but you can add it to your presentation. If it's public anyone will be able to see it and up to you whether you allow others to download the file or not. I would suggest you put it as private and go allow others to download the file and then just click on the upload. Oops, but I didn't add a title so it's come up and told me that I'm missing something there. So I'm just going to call it test. Click upload again. Now take a little while for it to upload, so it's telling you there to be patient and not to close the window. How long it takes to upload will depend on how big the file is that you're uploading. And once it's uploaded, it still needs to be converted, so you can't add it to your presentation straight away. There you go, it's been uploaded, and now you can go back and add more content if you want to. And if you scroll down, you'll see that the tick is saying that it's published, the two arrows are saying it's in process, and if you've got a exclamation mark, it means it's failed. So if we go back to my content and have a look at the list of content, you'll see that that file that I've just uploaded is processing. And once it's there in your library, open your WizIQ and go upload content from library as I showed you earlier. So good luck with scheduling your presentations and I look forward to viewing them.